Auto Comfort Analysis again? Yes, because Ladybug Tools 110. I did a series on Auto Comfort three months ago, uh, Auto Comfort Analysis Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3, as you can see here. And these were done with the legacy tools. And today I show it how you can do something similar or same study with the new Ladybug tools. Also because there were a lot of uh, questions and confusion on how that might work in the new Ladybug tools. For that reason, I downloaded this uh, small model. So actually it's a big model. It's, it's, um, it's a free model from Manhattan actually in New York. On the website it's split up in several um, portions which you can download for free and actually this is an even smaller sample of that model I downloaded. And we are interested in the outer comfort within in between the buildings basically. Let's open Grasshopper by typing Grasshopper or pressing the button over here. And we have a quick look on the old Auto comfort script just just as a reminder yeah so in the old script we when I start from here at the beginning we downloaded uh, the weather the weather file um, <clears throat> into this um, weather file URL tool and then imported all the data into into these two um, tools which split up the data into the different data sets like location, temperatures, wind speeds and stuff like that. And we also used the statistics file to find what are the typical week in terms of temperature, what is the, what is the extreme hot week or what is the extreme cold week <clears throat> of that data set. Uh, we used uh, Korea, I think. Yes, South Korea. This then uh, went into um, a tool which was called the Solar Adjust Temperature, where we can feed in um, geometry, which affects basically the test surface, which then gave us the Solar Adjust Mean r Radiant Temperature. That we needed to feed into the Auto Comfort Calculator. So the Auto Comfort Calculator it basically takes uh, the dry pulp temperature, the mean radiant temperature, wind speeds, humidity, and calculates the outdoor comfort. And we had a quite a sophisticated setup on how to choose um, the period, the test period, because we wanted to actually scroll through um, the hours of a specific week. So, for example, we we took the typical week as our period or test period. And then from that, we actually wanted to, to scroll through every hour of that week. We had two outputs. We had one um, mesh where we showed basically an average data of the whole test week. And then we had another mesh output, a colored mesh, which showed us just the specific hour we have chosen. So we do something similar i might um, try to simplify uh, the way and how we choose the hour of the day but concentrate also on how how we can actually achieve the same analysis with the new ladybug tools i'm gonna create a new file and somebody said in the comments there is no auto comfort in the new ladybug tools actually there is it's it's here in analysis data analysis and you can see here there's um, the ladybug adaptive comfort this is for in for indoors and then we have the ladybug utci which is the universal thermal climate index basically the outdoor comfort and you can see here's the here's an air temperature the air temperature then we have the, again, we have the mean radi radiant temperature. We need the, the relative humidity and the wind velocity, the wind speed. And then we need a run toggle. Okay, so how do we get these um, data sets? Yeah, we need, we need the, the ladybug download weather tool at first. And we need this um, 
tool which opens the web browser to actually download or find the, the, the specific weather set we want to use. So I would go here. Uh, we need a toggle, Boolean toggle. I'm going to place that here and it um, immediately went gray and when you touch the screen it means it works. And now I can just uh, double click here and it brings me to the weather to the weather map and let's go uh, somewhere here new york choose just the closest we can find it's probably this one but maybe i'd take one here because the the climate in the park might be quite different than than in, in in the urban area so i just click here copy link to clipboard there's actually nothing happened but it's already stored and i can go back here let's reorganize that i need a panel i just um control c just to place to place that link the url into that panel and I just close it. We need to open the weather file. So how can we open that? This is the ladybug input EPW E plus weather data. That's the shortcut. Um, can place it here and we already have our data, which is then the, the air temperature, relative humidity, wind speed and um, we need a toggle again to run that analysis. Press true. It's actually finished already. And and then we, we have different outputs here. And we, uh, I will just concentrate on the UTCI for the moment. We can add a panel here. This will just give me this output here and says Hourly continuous data collection from the, f the the 1st of January to the 31st of December between zero, the hour zero and 20, uh, 23. Universal Thermal Climate Index has 8,760 values, which are the hours of the year. So the, the year has 8,760 hours, but that doesn't show us anything really. What we need to do, we can actually go here into um, a ladybug deconstruct data that splits any text from values. You can place that here. And then we have these headers and we have values. Hey, here we go. So meaning we have now for every hour, for every hour of the year, we have the perceived temperature. That's what we looking at here. So the temperature might be, let's say, five, but because th there's very little humidity and there's very little wind speed, it actually feels only like minus one. That is the, per the perceived temperature. Careful with this, this is just estimations. So how can we go from here? Because of course we want to see that on, on our test surface, surface and also get the influence of the buildings onto that surface that's that's the question um so you can see here that we have this um, mean radiant temperature is able to adjust the direct sunlight or the the, the exposure to the sunlight of a, of a test point on the surface and we can feed that in here how do we get that yes um ladybug auto solar mean radiant temperature now, as this is this output here, the mean radiant temperature. Let's see what we need. Okay, we need the location. We need a surface temperature. And here's written um, a single number of an hourly data collection with the temperature or surfaces around the person in degrees Celsius. This includes the ground and 
any other surface blocking the view to the sky. Typically, outdoor dry pulp temperature is used when such surface temperatures are unknown. So yeah, we don't know the surface temperatures. That's why we use the dry pulp temperature. So we can place that here. Then we have the direct normal radiation. We have the diffuse horizontal radiation. We have the horizontal infrared radiation. And then we have some other stuff. Now we're stuck. We don't need it based on that um, tool because they don't have any underscore in the front except this one. But if there's an underscore in the front and at the end means it has already um, a default value, same as this one. We only need the run toggle. Let's put this here. And it already ran and there is the MRT which we can place into here. Let's do that. And maybe let's check how this changes. It doesn't really change anything because, because of these. So how do we get that? Well, there's another tool here. It's called a ladybug human to sky relation. Because as you can see here, it's called analyze data and then analyze geometry. And that's where we actually can analyze geometry in relation to the test surface. So it's, it's, it's getting a bit complicated, but I think it's actually simpler than before. So we need, again, the location. We need a position. And now it becomes interesting because a position we could now, of course, um, test one, one single point on this, on, on this surface, but we want to check the whole surface. So therefore we need to prepare this surface in order to actually test it. There's a tool called Ladybug Generate Point Grid that allows me to place a geometry. So I get this here because I just choose a very simple surface. I just choose surface here, set one surface, put this in the geometry slot. And then because I know this has roughly 500 meters, 500 by 400, I will try to set a fairly big grid so it, the calculation doesn't take too long at the beginning. Um, we can put a slider, but I can also just double click here and say 100. That gives me a slider of 100, or let's say 50 is a maximum. I make a, a, a really big grid size, so there's very little points on it. Uh, also, will I will also hide that, hide the preview, and then also hide the preview of this. Maybe, maybe not yet. Maybe not yet. Later. Now we we have a mesh output, so it created a mesh with uh, a grid size of, of of fifty, and we have eighty points. That's, that's quite a good number to start. And the points are the positions I want to test. So you can see positions, a point for the position of a human subject in the rhino scene. This is used to understand where a person is in relationship to the context. The context are the buildings. And we just place these points because we want to test all of them into here. And then we place the context the context Maybe let's, do, let's put it here so it's basically following the workflow I can select all the buildings and now they're all available made available here and I can place it in here and then I uh, yeah again I need a toggle
Um, just just want to say something now we need to be caref very careful because first of all there's one that, that feels to me is a bug and then the second thing is if we feed too much data it will take really long to calculate we could now basically put our sky exposure in here and our fractional body exposure put that in here and um, but that might uh, explode the calculation because the problem is then that we are not just calculating 8760 values it's always 8760 by times 80 times the amount of, of cells we have in our grid so what we could do either way we just um, so we can make it bigger so that we only have very little test points just for now and you can see here it's 20 20 20 test points is it correct yes 20 te test points it still feels a lot actually when i when i think about it so we actually want to simplify or we want to kind of restrict the period we want to check because to check a whole year actually doesn't make much sense it will give you an average number of the auto comfort but you want to know how is the auto comfort at the peak or at the coldest week Th that's what you actually want to check and ladybug there is a, there is first of all there's the there are the statistics there's the statistics file with which we can use so we can just click here on the start and connect this here and that will give us first of all here's a bit different um, than in the previous version but it still gives us the extreme cold week extreme hot week and typical weeks which is um, really enough to actually make a decent test so let's put this in here extreme extreme hot week maybe it's in more interesting so we know that our test period is in uh, august from the 24th of august to the 30th of august between the hours 0 and 23 so this is the hottest week and we only choose for that tutorial we only uh, select one hour of that give you an understanding how you can test it then you can find other methods on how to scroll through or use something similar what i did in the previous videos again how how can we move forward there's a tool which is called um, analyze period and then apply analyze period to a data collection analyze period would be just choosing this here slider for the month slider for the day and slider for that didn't work because it just gave me a slide of 100 Okay, forget it. Let's do it like this. Start month is the first. Start day is the first. And then we had another slider which is from 0 to 23 and then we can place this here end month and day and end hour there's also a way to set the time steps the increments you want to test so if you want to test every five hours, uh, you, then you can specify this here. But what, what we want to do, we want to select a specific hour out of this period here. So I would say then choose August. And we can set the start, the start date. It's fine with the first. Oh, no, we need to choose the 24th. It's from the 24th to the 30th and then we can choose an hour and here because we want to just choose one we just want to choose one hour of that of that um, 
period we can I will I will I will cheat a bit here uh, there's actually a trick well let's say uh, um, just for you to better understand the the apply analyst period tool is basically takes data like the the dry pub data and restricts the data set to a specific certain period and if you want to have only one hour you can actually choose the same start hour as the end hour then you have just one value so you can actually do this it's not very elegant but it works and uh, yeah I can read this so the output basically is then 23 so the out the temperature at uh, in August on the 24th in, in, in at midnight is 23 it's quite a lot that's the temperature in Celsius hope that's clear so far so that's how we can choose a specific hour of the year now in order to restrict um, the data set for all the other inputs we just use that and replace all the inputs we had so far so for drop up temperature we need place this ever this output here and now of course it doesn't understand uh, the input because these are still working with the whole year and now we have this restricted one hour so we can just copy that um, and then check the next one humidity that goes here and then we get the wind speed for now we can maybe just unplug this one so you can already see it works anyway let's let's move on I hope it's still clear what we're doing here so I'm, I'm, I'm maybe just repeating everything and clean up a bit so we have the auto comfort analysis in here we restricted our data to one hour we just want to check one hour and feed that back in here and it gives us the value of 23 celsius we need to do the same f with the other tools we need to restrict the data and since we're using the same here so we use the location then we use the dry pot temperature so we can actually replace that here it goes into the surface temperature then we have the normal radiation not uh, the direct normal radiation where we have no restricted data set yet so let's copy that And that goes, um, yeah, so that goes in here. And then we have the diffuse horizontal radiation. This horizontal radiation that goes here. We need more, more, one more. Uh, the horizontal infrared radiation yes now that works that works so we can actually and it also makes to, to restrict the data of course makes the calculation much faster that's also the reason why we do that Let's try to clean it up here a bit. Let's put this here. This is our geometry. This is the test surface. We have um, our context. We can actually rename that if we want. Context. And this is our.
ground plane. This is our test hour, which we fed in here. This is the test period. The test period is just one hour of the year at the moment. And then we can we can actually put that back in here. And now we can fix all these. We are actually already here. So I want to save that because um, otherwise might something might, might happen. We still have to be a bit careful because I found that there is an issue. The fraction of body exposed to direct sunlight. That's what they call it. The problem is it takes only numbers. So it's always a number between zero and one. But the problem is that the output here is not, is not cleaned up basically. So if I go in here, it gives me this. And what I want, um, is first of all, the data cleaned like this. That's what I want. And the problem is also there are 175,200 values. So what what's happening here? The problem is that it somehow calculates, uh, just tried something. Uh, it calculates every hour of the year, although it should actually have only uh, 20 values. It has, to, it, has, it has 20 branches, but it has for each branch every hour of the year. So we need to also restrict the data period. To get only 20 values, right? So because we, we have 20 test points and we want to get only one value for each test point. That's why we have 20 values. And I don't know, I think it's a bug, to be honest. So anyway, so that I found it out the hard way because my computer crashed. So now we have restricted the data to the 20 uh, values. And we still need to, um, yeah, we still need this one here, actually. We want to restrict this uh, the values to to basically just numbers so the output should be like this and we also just flatten that so you can go in here and flatten then it's just this very simple data set of zero 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 one 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 and we put that into here and we don't need to clean that up because that's already cleaned up weirdly 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 this is already cleaned up this now so sky exposure goes into here. And then we have other things here. The ground reference, that's actually the, the characteristics of the ground material. Uh, here is written default is uh, 0.25, which is characteristics for outdoor grass or dry bare soil. I would say we go put in here 0.5 as an average. Now you can see we actually have all these values 26, 24, 25 and they all they rep represent basically these different areas here. The, the, the different test points. That's pretty cool already. We got quite far but we can, can't see anything. So I will also close this here. Um, we'll just hide everything. Now maybe we show that. We can actually try to show that just with, with a very simple representation. Custom pre -re preview, that's what we want. And we need a material. Create material. And with that we can actually, so I can hide that 
and I can change the transparency um, like this and we don't need to see the test surface for now we know it's there what's more important is that we have these points because we are gonna create a new surface with the colors on it so now we have all these values and we have uh, this other tool here which is called spatial heat map that allows to input the values first of all and it also allows us to input the mesh now something is wrong hmm uh, I think because I need to flatten this yes yeah you need to flatten that because again here if you look at that these are all separate branches of data each point is it o its own data set basically and we need to flatten that to one to one list of data and here we are now it's very it's very rough of course but we can then increase our grid size let's go gradually let's do 80 first let's see how how responsive that is Let's go down to 10. I might pause a bit. And there you have it. Um, this is um, one of the hotter weeks in Manhattan during in August. And the perceived temperature at around 4 p.m. in the afternoon. These are of these are the Celsius. Yeah, it took a few minutes to actually calculate all these. But it's a quite big model as well. I don't like the color here. It really annoys me. Uh, let's set another color. Maybe less transparent. Let's try another. Let's turn off the shadows. Maybe that's also a bit annoying here. Um, shadows. Or we don't have to, I mean, we don't have to show that really. It's also possible to just turn this off and just get back our buildings from the model. That's also possible. And then we can adjust how we, how we want to look at that. I showed how you can change the color scheme for the diagram in other videos. So you might want to check that out. But yeah, I think it works really nice. I cannot complain about the new Ladybug tools. Just a quick uh, moment to repeat everything. So we downloaded the weather data, placed the weather data in the panel. We checked what week, which week is the hottest week. We could of course check another week. You could also set up this period tool a bit different if you want if you want to um, check a broader time period then of course you can check like a whole week and then get that result we restricted then the, the data into the in, into the period when we want to uh, test uh, and fed this into the outdoor solar mean radiant temperature which we fed into the auto uh, comfort analysis tool and that then went back here into the heat in the, into the heat map, and here we checked the um, how does the building influences actually the exposure on the ground level. And here we have our ground level, and we created these points, the grid size, and the context. So what I will do actually, I will place this and my model. Uh, I will place a link in, in the show notes so you can download everything and have a look and check how it goes. Okay, that's that's it for today for today. That's it for today and hope you enjoyed it and have fun testing it, trying it out. Yes, I wanna say one more thing. Um if you go into the into the download folder of the ladybug tools there are actually samples these are super helpful if you want if you want to check out um, some of the features in ladybug 
go in here there is actually one it's called comfort in the street canyon where i got some of the ideas for this script and there are others of course windrows outdoor comfort there's an outdoor comfort actually i'm not sure if that does the same thing as mine let's check it out yeah so this is one of the uh, sample files actually using actually you can see that you can use it in so many different ways which is great and but it it plots out um an hourly ladybug chart of course we actually i think it's even the same uh, data set i'm using for my script but that's what it does so it, it's 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 only related to that site but not to a certain 3d model so here you have it you have you can look at these and you can download mine in the show notes happy wednesday thursday whatever it is i don't know see you next time